What's up everybody, welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. Last week I took the final exam for my differential equations course and yesterday the grades officially got posted and I got an A, so I'm super excited and happy about that. Again, shout out to Black Pen, Red Pen and Professor Leonard because they're responsible, partially responsible. I put in a lot of work and effort though too. But yeah, it wasn't an easy class, but pretty excited about the A, but even more excited about the fact that my diploma is in the mail. That was it, that was my last credit. It's in the mail on its way here right now. And within the next two weeks, I'll be a graduate student as well and starting my first semester as a grad student. So a lot of cool shit's happening in my life. Life. It's really exciting. I'm just trying to experience it all, take it all in. That's why I haven't been uploading as much as I'd like. But once the semester starts and I get into a routine, it'll be consistent and it'll be nice. So I'm here with a video though, while this stuff is fresh, because you know what they say, if you don't use it, you lose it. So I'm here with some differential equations. And this is one of the first methods you learn for how to solve differential equations. Okay, called the method of integrating factors. So we can use this method to solve differential equations of this form. Let's see if we can classify these, by the way. Let's see. These are ordinary differential equations because we don't have any partial derivatives, right? They're also linear because we just have y. We don't have any y squared, any cosine y, any weird shit like that. So it's definitely linear. And it's also first order. Our highest derivative is a first derivative. So we have an ordinary first order linear differential equation. We can solve this using the method of integrating factors. Okay, so what this method does is it takes advantage of the product rule. Hopefully that looks familiar from calculus. All right, the product rule, which basically is a rule we use to take the derivative of the product of two functions, hence product rule, right? The product two functions. And what it says is that, let's say we have two functions, u and v, we're taking the derivative, that's equal to u prime times v plus u times v prime. And the way I remember this and what I sort of say to myself as I'm using this product rule is the derivative of the first times the second plus the derivative of the second times the first. That's just kind of the mnemonic I use, but use whatever works for you. But we're going to take advantage of this product rule, all right? And we're going to use this to solve some differential equations just like this one. So first of all, because... When I was first shown this, I was thinking, okay, why can't I just directly solve this, like integrate both sides, you know what I mean? So I'm sure y'all are smart enough to know that you can't do that, but maybe you're a dummy like me, and maybe you're thinking, you know, can't I just solve this integrating both sides? Um, there's an issue with doing that, though. This y prime, yes, the fundamental theorem of calculus, that can become a y. This e to the t is just e to the t, that's fine, but with this 2y, that's the problem, because y is a function of t. No, you can't just write that as y squared over 2. Don't do that. It's a function of t. We don't know what it is or how to integrate it. So that's the issue. That's the problem we have, right? But what we can notice, what can we notice? y prime and y kind of looks like u prime and u, right? So what we can do is we can think about, okay, maybe I can multiply both sides of this equation by something so that I get a product rule kind of situation on the left-hand side of this equation. Right? So this is kind of, kind of different for us, kind of weird, because we're so used to using the product rule to go from here to here. Now we're going backwards, right? Differential equations, doing some weird stuff, going backwards from two terms and rewriting it as the derivative of a product, right? So that's our goal here, is to find something to multiply both sides of this equation by, which, by the way, that something is a function of t, and that something is called an integrating factor. So the goal here is to find that integrating factor, which is the thing I can multiply both sides of this equation by to get that product rule situation in that left-hand side. Because then what I can do is I can condense these two terms into the derivative of a single term, right? And then I can integrate both sides and it works out really nicely. Okay, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. That's the method of integrating factors, not too bad. So for the rest of the video, first I'm gonna derive a formula for how you can find the integrating factor. So we're gonna work with this general equation. And the reason I'm deriving it is because it's not too difficult to do, it doesn't take too long, and it may benefit you. You know, I'd rather do that if there's time instead of just throwing a formula at you. So I'm gonna do that, then we're gonna come back to this example, then we'll maybe hit one, maybe even two more examples after that. All right, guys, so now we're gonna derive the formula for our integrating factor, which is a function of t that we're gonna call mu. So this mu of t is our integrating factor function. Yeah, this is how I learned it, and this is how you'll see most textbooks state it. Don't be scared of the Greek letters. It's okay, it's just a mu, it's just a letter, we're all good. So integrating factor, again, I want this to be a function so that when I multiply it in, I get that product rule here on the left-hand side. So let's just see what happens when I multiply it in. I get y prime times mu of t, okay, that's from that first term, plus mu of t times p of t times y. Okay, that's what I get when I multiply it in. 
on the left hand side of this equation. On the right, I get mu of t times g of t, but I don't really care about that, right? I'm going to be able to integrate that. It's all good. What I'm worried about is this. I want this to equal a product rule, right? So derivative of the first times the second plus derivative of the second times the first, okay? That's what I want this to equal. So now maybe you notice that both these terms can go by, by Felicia, right? These are both gone. So what is it that I'm really looking for? And you could have noticed maybe before, but definitely now it's, it's pretty convincing that what I'm looking for is a function mu of t such that when I multiply that function by p of t, it equals the derivative of mu, right? So I can go and write that out over here. I'm looking for that mu of t so that mu of t times p of t equals mu prime of t. This is now this is what I'm trying to solve, all right? It's funny because I'm solving a differential equation in order to come up with a formula to solve other differential equations. It's kind of cool, I guess, sort of like math inception, all right? So now maybe you're thinking, since I want to solve for mu of t, I'm going to divide both sides by p of t, and we're going to be good. Nope, I'm going to do something different, and it may not make sense at first, but it will toward the end. I promise you, just bear with me. So I'm going to divide both sides by mu of t, okay? That is a terrible mu. I'm so sorry. Mu of t, what happens then? Well, this is gone. I'm going to draw a little arrow here. Now what I have is p of t equals mu prime of t over mu of t. And now what I'm going to do is integrate both sides. All right, I'm going to integrate both sides. And this is really cool, I think. Well, I thought it was cool when I was shown this because it's one of those things where, like, you know, once you see it, you're like, oh, that's really cool. It makes total sense. But you know that like on your own, you wouldn't have been able to come up with all this. But at the end, you're like, oh, it makes sense. So if you have no idea why I'm doing this, it's okay. As long as at the end, you're nodding your head like that makes sense. Like I understand that. Okay. So let's see. I got to integrate this stuff. I can't really integrate the integral of P of T. So I'm just going to write that here. And I'll be a good little mathematician. All right. DT. Okay. So what does this equal? I think I can deal with this right hand side though. I think I can deal with this integral. Maybe you're already getting an idea for what this is. Think about it for a second, maybe pause the video. So I'll rewrite it in one way actually that'll make it maybe a little more clear on what it is, okay? Because what this does is it reminds me of chain rule, right? Because think about it, we're integrating, that's anti-derivative, we're doing the opposite of a derivative, right? Opposite direction. So one way I can think about it is what can I take the derivative of to get one over something times the derivative of something? What gives me this kind of stuff when I take the derivative of it? And the answer is natural log. And hopefully you thought that, but if you didn't, it's all good as long as it makes sense now. And again, we're gonna check our answer right now because if this is truly the answer, I should be able to take the derivative of this and get back to here. Derivative is one over mu of t times the derivative of mu, right? So I get right back to where I was. And yeah, we're good to go from here. And I'm about to do one thing. I'm about to do one thing that may bother you, may upset you. I know it bothered me a little bit when I saw it. Here's what I'm about to do. Oh no, I did the unthinkable, right? It's sort of like a meme, don't forget the plus C, you can't forget it. So why is it that I can just erase it? Well, think about it, we're solving a differential equation, we get to a plus C, that means when I, when I finish doing this, if I keep going, I'm gonna have a C in my solution, and I'm gonna have infinitely many solutions, right? Because that C represents an arbitrary constant, so that equation represents an infinite family of solutions, but I don't need infinitely many solutions. I need one integrating factor that works, right? So that's why I can just erase that plus C because like, I don't need all these, I just need one. So I didn't forget the plus C. Don't call the math police on me, all right? I just erased it, I got rid of it. And maybe someone has a better explanation for why I can erase it. Let me know in the comments, I'll pin your comment. It's all good. All right, so now we're good here. I just need to thump, thump, base E, both these sides. My sound effects, I know you're cringing really hard, but all right, and this actually solves for mu of t. Whoa, this is going to get me my integrating factor. See, it wasn't too bad. It was quicker than I remembered, actually, because that's gone e to the integral. Have you seen an integral in an exponent before? I don't think I have until this point. Maybe in statistics, actually, you see that. So this is my integrating factor function, is e to the integral p of t dt, of course. Did I put the dt here? Wow, I was a good mathematician. All right. So that means given an, a differential equation of this form, I can identify what p of t is, and I can simply stick it in here, um, finish that integration, multiply both sides of this equation, do all that stuff. We're going to do a couple examples right now, but hopefully this makes sense. Any comments, any questions, leave them below.
So we've talked about how to use this method. We've derived our formula for our integrating factor. I think we're ready. I think we're ready to solve some equations. So we're going to find the general solution. We're going to go back to this equation we looked at in the beginning of the video and find the general solution. And I think you'll find it to be not that difficult. Okay. So first thing we do is we make sure this is the right form of an equation we can solve, right? First order, linear, ordinary, all that stuff. We technically already did that at the beginning of the video. Then we look for our integrating factor, okay, which is e to the integral of p of t dt. What is our p of t? 2. e to the integral of 2 dt, which equals e to the what? What is the integral of 2 dt? That's just 2t. And technically, we have a plus c, but I'm going to do something that you may be skeptical of. Again, I'm going to erase the plus c, right, because look what happens. 2t plus c exponent rules. I can split that up. I'd have e to the 2t times e to the c. c is just a constant, which means e to the c is just a constant, right? So any constant in front of this e to the 2t will work, so I pick the simplest one. That's the best explanation I have for why we don't care about the plus c, okay? So e to the 2t, this is our integrating factor. We're going to multiply both sides of this equation by e to the 2t. Let's see what happens. y prime e to the 2t plus 2e to the 2t y equals e to the 2t times e to the t. I'll write out the full steps for this, but in the future, I'm just going to jump straight to it, right? But I want to show how important these exponent rules are. They come up constantly in differential equations. e to the 2t, e to the t. Same base, we add the exponents. That's e to the 3t, right? Just wanted to show how I got that instead of jumping straight to it. But in the future, I will jump straight through it. Um, yeah, so what do we have here? Oh, yeah, we have a product rule, right? That's what we wanted. So let's confirm first that this is indeed a product rule, okay? And how I like to do that is like to skip sort of forward. I like to assume this is correct and then just go back and double check because we're more familiar with going this way, right? Calculus, okay? So derivative of the first times the second, we're good there. Derivative of the second times the first, yeah, it all lines up. So this is good to go. And I'm just going to copy e to the 3t. Now what can I do? Integrate both sides, okay? Integrate, integrate. So let's see. Fundamental theorem of calculus. Hallelujah. So let me draw an arrow. I'm not taking advantage of this board space over here, right? I'll draw an arrow over here. If I integrate, it sort of cancels the derivative, but I need to remember my plus c. y times e to the 2t plus c equals, okay, what is the integral of e to the 3t? You could do a u sub, but you could also just recognize that when you take the derivative of e to the 3t, you use that chain rule, right? So you're going to have 3 times e to the 3t. So taking uh, integrating, we're going the opposite way. So instead of multiplying by 3, you divide. That's how I think of it, but a u sub would work as well if you're not super confident, okay? So 1 third e to the 3t plus c. So I already have a plus c here. I can write c1, c2, but these are arbitrary constants. Can't I just combine them, right? So I'm just going to combine them and write the c over here because, again, they're arbitrary, okay? Um, and yeah, sometimes they may formally like combine them, do all this stuff, and sometimes they just sloppily skip this plus C and just throw it here. Just depends on your structure, depends on the textbook, all that stuff. But yeah, the plus C, we can move it to the right side because arbitrary constant, we don't, we don't need two of them, right? We can combine them. Uh, yeah, so what am I trying to do? Solve for Y. That's our general solution. If I solve for Y and get Y equals something, that is our general solution. So all I've left to do is divide by E to the 2T. Okay, so y, and again, this is a function of t. Maybe I'll write it like this, okay? y of t, our general solution. Sometimes you see it written like that, okay? Uh, equals what? One third e to the 3t divided by e to the 2t. I'll go ahead and write it like this. e to the 2t, right? Top exponent minus bottom exponent, that leaves me with one third e to the t, right? 3t minus 2t. Same with the plus c. I end up with plus c over e to the 2t, which I'm just going to write actually as plus c e to the negative 2t. I'm not feeling the fractions today. I feel like writing it this way. This is our general solution. This represents infinitely many solutions because this c is an arbitrary constant. It can be any number. Okay. So this is our general solution. How can we check? How can we double check our answer? Well, I can take the derivative of this, right? write out y prime and I can multiply this by two. Basically, I plug in y and plug in the derivative to this function and make sure I get e to the t, which you will. So we have confirmed that we have found the general solution using the method of integrating factors. Let's do one, maybe two more examples.
All right, guys, so this is the point in the video where I invite you to pull out a pen and paper, pause the video, write this problem down, and try it on your own. That's how you learn. Math is not a spectator sport. You have to actually try if you want to learn, so here's your chance to learn free of charge. I'm not asking for a damn thing other than a like and a subscription, okay? But pause the video, try it on your own, press play when you're ready to check your answer. All right, so hopefully you're done by now. Let's go and go through this. Is this, first of all, the type of differential equation that I can solve using this method? Yes, I got the y prime here by itself. I have a y. My p of t in this case is what? 3 over t. And then I got, you know, uh, a function of t over here. We're not too worried about that. So yes, this is um, of the right form of differential equation. Now let's find my integrating factor. e to the integral of what? What is my p of t in this case? 3 over t. We already said that, right? repeating myself over here, 3 over t dt, which equals what? Well, I can bring the 3 out in front if I prefer to do that. Maybe that makes it easier to look at. 1 over t, because we all know the integral 1 over t, right? So e to the 3, what is it? Ln t. And maybe you're tempted to start crossing stuff out right now. And remember, the plus c, we do the unthinkable. We forget it, right? I know. We forget it. So maybe you're thinking of crossing stuff out. You can't quite do that yet. You can think about this a couple different ways. First of all, we have logarithm properties where we can move this number out in front to the exponent. Then we can cross stuff out. Or we can think of this, since this is 3 times ln of t, we can use our just our exponent rules. Okay, We can write e to the ln t all to the third power. Okay, So either way, we end up with okay, t cubed. Because again, we can move this up here. 3, we can move that up there. These cancel, t cubed, right? So we end up with t cubed, okay? So, whoa, we have an integrating factor that's not an exponential function. So exciting. We don't see this, actually. Usually it's an exponential. So let's go and multiply this out and see what we get. t cubed, well, I don't want that yet. I want the y prime. y prime t cubed plus 3y over t. So one of the t's will cancel. So I get 3t squared. Yeah, that's right, y equals all, all those t cubes will cancel. Wow, that's pretty nice. So again, what's going to end up in here? It's always going to be y and your integrating factor, right? Um, but double check. That's what I'm about to do. Derivative of the first times the second, that's good. Derivative of the second times the first, that's good. So always double check, but yeah, it is going to be y along with the integrating factor. Now, integrate both sides. And again, I don't know why I'm well, I guess I didn't, you know, whatever. Okay, so I'm going to write this over here. Integrate both sides. Well, bam. Well, fling. All right, now what do I do? It's fundamental theorem of calc, baby. This cancels, but plus C. Don't forget it. Y, T cubed plus C. You can use a C1 if you want, because you already know I'm going to get a plus C here. I'm going to end up moving this over. I'm just going to skip all that nonsense and go straight to it, okay? Equals. E to the T is just E to the T plus C e to the t plus c. Last step, divide by t cubed. That was pretty easy, right? So my general solution, general solution is what? y of t equals e to the t, this time I will write fractions, over t cubed plus uh, c over t cubed. How do you want to check this answer? Well, you can, let's see what we need to do here. Take the derivative plug it in, and then plug this function itself in as well for y and see if it equals e to the t over t cubed, which it will. So therefore, this is our general solution using the method of integrating factors. And I think this is the last example I'm going to do. If you need to see more examples, let me know in the comments below. I enjoyed making this video. I really enjoyed differential equations as a course. The content has sort of a calculus vibe, and I really like calculus. So DiffEQ is cool in my book, but I hope you all enjoyed this video. Hit like, subscribe, do all that stuff, but most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles. See you on the next video.